Hey, what's going on? Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. And if you're watching this, you obviously are deciding on what domain name to choose. And I got a funny story about this because I was kind of a domain hoarder over the years. I'm finally beating this addiction and cleaning out my account. And the thing is, a, a domain represents you know progress on something that's usually just trapped in your head, an idea that you have. You know, the first step for me was always buying the domain. And as I'm looking back through some of my folders, I see some of the domains that I bought thinking that they would get search traffic. And the worst one by far is window treatments for sliding glass doors .com. At this time, I was probably a 24-year-old guy just out of grad school, living at home with my parents. Had no idea what a window treatment was, but I did a little bit of keyword research and there was search traffic for it. And obviously nothing became of that. I never put time into the website because I wasn't passionate about it. So I would make sure you watch this video so you don't make a dumb mistake like me. If you do, you're going to figure out the best domain name for you by the end. This is a domain buying guide, but you're not actually buying a domain. You can't buy a domain for a lifetime. And in fact, you're just subscribing and the max term is 10 years. So you can never have your domain for more than 10 years in advance. So that's an important thing to know. And now we can just dig into how to get the right one and how to claim that domain before somebody else can get it. And I'll provide a few examples on the next slide, but if you stick with these four bullet points, you really can't go wrong. And the first one is the domain name should be alphanumeric only. As you saw in my example, you don't want any dashes in there. And when it comes to the extension, there's so many of them available today. I don't look at anything except .com. Only in a rare case would I use a .net or a .org, or if you want to go with one of the fancy new extensions, there's the option available, but what people inherently know is .com. I mean, that goes along with the next bullet point, which is you want to keep it short and memorable, and people are less likely to remember an extension other than .com, but on top of that, you just want to make sure the wording itself that you choose is memorable. It's got to be easy to say aloud, like mine, which is WebsiteProfitCourse.com. And lastly, you know, just some easy examples of what you might want to choose are your business name or your personal name. In fact, I would recommend, regardless of what you're doing or where you're at, that you register your personal name because, you know, why wouldn't you want to have that and make sure nobody else can get that? It's kind of like registering your Gmail address, you know, 15 years too late and you have to get your name 123 at gmail.com. So be first here and make sure that you claim your domain because there's probably somebody else in the world with the same name as you. And here are examples of both good and bad. And as you could tell, my domain, I stuck to this rule of thumb, and that's use a three-word combination. And the reason I say three is because one-word and two-word domains are just going to be hard to register. Most of them are taken. If you can get a two-word domain, that'd be great. And I work with clients who are in the local home service industry. So a good example of a domain for someone like that might be XYZ contracting. Obviously XYZ is just a placeholder for any acronym that a company might use. But a good example is XYZcontracting.com. It's short and simple, easy to say aloud. It hits all the checkpoints. And a bad example would be XYZ-contracting.net. I mean, that's just a little bit too complicated doesn't look that great on business cards and it's hard to say to people when you're having a conversation with them. The second example here is a good one. It's a real one because this growingyourgreens.com, this is a guy on YouTube and he actually doesn't have a website. He just uses this domain to forward to his YouTube channel and he, he you know, promotes this domain name in all the videos. So instead of having to say, go to youtube.com slash user slash growingyourgreens, he could just say growingyourgreens.com. And for the bad example of this, I put something that is just slang terminology. So growing your greens, spelling your U-R instead of the full spelling. And I also put growingyourgreens.plants. I have no idea if .plants is an extension, but I know that's the type of extension that these companies are offering nowadays. And I mean, it looks cool, but I, I just don't think it's as good as .com. The third example here is also a real one. This is flyingfish.com. And this is a brewery near me in New Jersey. They've been around for a long time. They're actually one of the first craft breweries in our area. You know, you might say they're like the Sam Adams of South Jersey. 
I don't actually know what their um, you know business name is, but just a, a good example of a bad domain that they could have got would have been flyingfishbeerllc.com if that was their actual business name. You know, it's just a, a little too complicated, a little too long. And the last one here, this is a fake example, but I, I just did something where I picked a word that's hard to pronounce or just hard to spell if you say it out loud to the average person. And so the good example is businessplaybook.com. The bad example is businessrepertoire.com. <laughs> and you can tell it's just, you know, hard to pronounce. I, like if you if you said that to somebody, the chances of them spelling it right the first time are slim. Now, obviously, with something like this, they could probably look up the word and figure out how to spell it. But there's cases where you might say a word and people have no idea what you're saying and have no idea how to spell it. Now we'll look at how you get set up with a domain name. And, you know, 90% of the time I'd say you're going to want to pair a domain name with web hosting. So the easiest thing to do is to buy your domain and your web hosting together. And that way they'll be automatically linked. I like to do this with HostGator.com. They're one of the biggest and most affordable hosting companies. They've been around for longer than almost every other hosting company. And I've personally used them for almost a decade now for both personal and client websites. Now you can also split these two things up and use two separate companies. You register your domain name with GoDaddy or another company. They're called domain registrars. And a lot of these companies offer multiple services. They'll do domains, they'll do hosting, they'll do website builders, along with other packages that they offer. Now, personally, I don't like using GoDaddy hosting. I've had a few clients who use their hosting and we've just had a bad experience with it. So I don't recommend using GoDaddy for hosting, but I've had no issues with them just for domain registration. So don't worry about it if you already have a domain registered with GoDaddy. You can buy hosting with HostGator and link them together. And it just requires a little bit of setup. When you register your domain, you can go into your domain settings and there should be an area called DNS settings. And all you have to do is get your name servers from the hosting company that you sign up with and copy and paste them to your DNS settings at the domain registrar. And if you're using two separate companies, that's how you link those two together manually. But like I said, if you do everything with HostGator to begin with, it'll be set up from the get-go and you don't have to worry about that step. And just to summarize here, you know, these might be some reasons that you'll want to register your domain today. And as I showed in the one example, you can not build a website and just forward it to a third party URL, whether that's social media or another website. You can build a business website, which that's what I do. I build and manage local small business websites using WordPress. And really WordPress is the most professional software to manage a website. There's other companies out there like Squarespace and you know ones that offer the website builders, which that's great to launch really quickly. But the problem is you're highly limited with how you can customize those websites and you're locked into those websites completely whereas with WordPress you can choose any hosting company any domain company and move your you know your companies around if you want to transfer your domain from one company to another you can do that if you want to choose or upgrade hosting you can do that so that's why I always recommend building with WordPress and it also works well for these other things you know if you're building a portfolio or a resume website WordPress is the standard for a personal blog website and it's also a great vehicle to learn code or web design but you could also do this and learn you know HTML PHP you could do all that through a web hosting account now like I just mentioned I am a big WordPress advocate I built all my websites with WordPress and I think that 80 to 90 percent of the time you should choose WordPress to build a website and that's why I put together this free training for you if you go to WebsiteProfitCourse.com slash beginner, that'll take you through everything you need to know about web hosting, WordPress, and how to launch a website step by step. I'll also include a link for that here in the top right corner and in the description below. And if you think you're ready to set up your website right now, I'll include a link to HostGator below and that will give you 45% off your first year of web hosting. So you can get started with domain and hosting at a great price takes a little bit of time to get up to speed but once you do that's a skill that's gonna take you you know into the next 10 or 20 years with this new economy the new digital economy that we're in don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful 
plus subscribe to my channel for more website tutorials like this one. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll do my best to answer it and point you in the right direction. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope you join me on the next one. Have a great day, and don't forget to get your domain.